All right, we are at the West Virginia Botanic Gardens today. We're just gonna see what we can get into, I guess. Cheats a little bit, but what that does, So it's dance night again and I googled trails and stuff to do in Morgantown and the Botanic Gardens popped up so never been here and I don't know what to expect um, it looks like there's quite a few trails to walk around and being the fact that it says it's the Botanic Gardens I imagine that there's at least some pretty flowers to take pictures of so I figured I'd come up here shoot some video and we would talk about composition that would be incorporating the photography element into this video so um, one thing I would say I didn't think of is buy bug spray or wear bug spray when you come up here and because uh, I'm getting eaten alive Stop to eat my salad. A couple minutes ago, and uh, bugs are just chewing on me. So, I don't know what to expect. We'll uh, come in here and we'll just play it by ear. Might be a total failure, might be pretty cool. Okay. Turning off the main road, I'm standing at the uh, the entrance right now. There's an upper lot here, which is like five or six spots. And then straight on down goes to the lower lot. There's some pretty flowers. So, the there's a sign up here that says if you plan to be here past 7 30 park in the upper lot because they lock uh, this main gate so since dance class is till 8 45 tonight i don't know how long i'm going to be here so i'm just going to be wandering around killing time looks like there's uh, quite a few trails I'm here i'm gonna walk down and do all that. Reservoir loop. I guess we're gonna go this way. Let's see what we can see. That's neat. All right, so why is composition so important? Uh, take something like this that's interesting that we want to take a picture of. It's this somebody carved man's face into the tree. So we want to take a picture of it, but we want it to look interesting. We want it to tell a story. So what we would do as far as composition, you know, most people would just stand right here, look at it, take a picture of yeah, that's but that's boring that's what everybody does and we want to do something different so when I look at this scene and I want to do something different with it um, what I see is the man and I see this camera not picking up on the light it's really dark right here camera wise but there's nothing really around the sun's kind of behind clouds and haze and all that so there's no sun peeking through um so what your background is going to be is probably you know these trees here this is going to be your mid-ground your subject and then, so i want to look for some kind of little foreground element which these little uh, leaves right here can probably serve for so what I'll do, let me readjust the camera, is I'll get down here. 
here. I will have to adjust my settings because it's uh, dark here. So we can cheat a little bit by going to live view. We're going to bump our ISO up to 800, which helps a lot. Um, since I'm not shooting at a moving object, I can drop my shutter speed. Uh, my aperture is at four, which it's can go no lower because this is my 24 to 105 f4 and so my aperture is as wide as it can um, right now it's looking like 1 60th of a second we'll go to 200th of a second looks a little bit dark but i can probably i'm not blowing out the background i could probably bring those shadows up in post so what i want to do get my right focal length Turn live view off because I've got my settings dialed in. So I'm gonna get right down here. I'll focus on the guy. That way some of these things will be, these foreground elements will be out of focus. What I want to kind of do is frame them up. take some shots and we'll see what comes out. I like this right here. It's kind of backlit from the sun, but the uh, straight line archways. Now, my still won't have that camera flare in it, sun flare, but we're going to take some pictures of that. All right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch my camera to aperture priority. Uh, what that does is it's kind of, it, I set the aperture at what I want, which I'm gonna stay at F4. But since the sun's peeking in and out and I'm going in shade and out of shade, since my lighting is changing so much, I'm gonna do aperture priority which will control my depth of field and um, you know what I want to be in focus how much depth of field I have and it will automatically adjust my shutter speed for the proper exposure so I don't have to fuss with doing that if I find that my shutter speed is too slow then I'll just bump my ISO up um, I don't really want the sky to be in any of the pictures because the sky is just it's boring it's real hazy and white all over not that it's overcast it's just so much smoke from the fires out west um, is creating this haze and it's just making everything white so the sky is of no interest to me today so we're not going to worry about you know exposing for the sky and then you know lighten up the shadows we'll just expose for everything down on ground level and uh, go from there so you say Sean you're a portrait photographer why are you going out here taking pictures of flowers a couple reasons it's dance night I got three hours to kill other reason it's practice um, like any other skill photography you need to practice whether I'm taking pictures of a person or a flower I still have to practice composition. I still have to practice getting my settings right. Um, every time I'm out here shooting in different light conditions, I learn how my camera sees the light. And that's one of the big things you need to learn of your camera is you need to learn how it sees light. Our cameras don't see light the way our eyes do. So the more you're out and the more you're shooting, the better you'll get and the more second natured it'll be for you to adjust settings. All right, so this place is good as any to talk about composition and some of the rules or guidelines, I should say. Um, when you're composing a picture, there's basically three elements. There's your foreground, your midground, and your background. Generally, but not always, uh, your subject is going to be in the midground. Um, sometimes there's not going to be a foreground. It's like if you're taking uh, you know, portraits in a studio, 
foreground is not always available and it could be something as simple as a prop holding the flower in front of your face um, but for like an outside portrait you know say I came across these rocks and so the rocks are my subject so obviously you have the trees in the background and then the rocks are your subject that you're actually going to be photographing um, I'm not going to say it's going to be an interesting photograph because it's a picture of rocks, but it's a neat little stack. Um, but part of the foreground element, you know, you could either have like, you know, some of these grasses sticking out that'll be blurry. Um, or even, I mean, the foreground could even be just this little pathway leading you up into it. Um, sometimes you don't want to clutter up your frame with a bunch of stuff blurry right in front of the lens because sometimes it, it gets it gets to the point of where it's distracting sometimes you want to be careful with whatever you put in your foreground because it can get too distracting if it's not done right like you know there's no reason to hide behind this bush to take or these grasses to take a picture of this what a better foreground element for you know this scene would be you know I'm gonna step back we'll move the camera back to here okay like that that's a decent composition now I would zoom in a little bit like that and so in that frame Okay, you can have your foreground elements. This path is kind of a leading line up to your rocks. And you've got all these trees in the background. That's what I would do, you know, for something like that. Okay, this trail is called the Wetland Boardwalk. Which brings me to another point, leading lines. You want to look for something in your picture to make some sort of a line to your subject. Like if I was taking portraits right here, you know, I would have my person here, you know, pose up something here, this, just work with this, but you have the lines that are coming from these railings that's directing the eye to your subject. All right, real quick right here, what I see that sparks my interest. I'm sure another photographer would take you know, something with all these, but I like this pathway. And this arch. If I was composing a portrait, I would put my subject, you could put them in that path there with the, the arch over there and that you have two things. You have leading lines and you have framing, which is something I haven't talked about yet, which we'll talk about now. Framing, I touched on it back on the bridge over there. Um, another element of composition you can look for too is something in the background or foreground that kind of frames your subject be it an archway a tree just a branch it doesn't and it doesn't have to go all the way around it can be like partial like I'm framing myself with my arm something as simple as that or it could be some branches uh, stuff like that but that's basically framing just something to kind of frame your subject self-explanatory Framing. Okay, I did see something that caught my eye right here. I lost my sunlight for it, but sunlight was peeking through. Here you can see it. Still coming in, but it was peeking through and it was hitting one of them little plants just right. And it just kind of highlighted that plant out of everything around it I, I snapped some pics real quick of it we'll we'll see if they come out but uh it was something 
pretty cool that I saw. Alright, so we're going to try to take a picture of these daisies. That's interesting, other than just, you know, snapping a picture there. So in our consideration of foreground, background, midground, obviously our daisies are going to be the midground. So what do we want to be as the background? There is gun range near here, so so do we want this building to be the background, or do we want the greenery to be the background? I want the greenery to be the background. Now, I mean, it's all personal preference, but I'm going to go along with you know picking probably the prettiest daisy focusing on it and then everything else will be blurry around it so really you won't be able to tell what's back there it'll just be kind of blurred greenness so we'll see how it works out okay something I noticed while I was shooting that way was stepping over here the Sun was coming down which added to me a more interesting background so I took some shots of the daisy that way with the Sun coming down through shining through the background it also gave a nice backlight to the edges of the leaves and flower petals and kind of gave it a little bit of a, a highlight which was pretty cool all right these Black-eyed Susans, I think is what they're called. Um, another thing um, to consider, foreground, background, and midground. I'm gonna take a picture of one of them and the angle I'm gonna approach it, it's gonna kinda be above and down. That way, my background will be blurred yellow. So it'll be one in focus and everything around it will kind of blur out, but it will kind of surround it and stuff. And as far as foreground, I don't think I'm gonna clutter it with anything too much, maybe another out of focus flower or two. So I'm gonna snap some pictures here and we'll see what happens. The thing I noticed in this daisy garden, if you see the sun peeking through, but because it's so hazy from all the, the smoke in the air, it dialed down the intensity of the sun so much that it just became a giant bokeh ball. And I got a couple pictures like that, which I think are gonna be pretty cool. All right. One thing I wanted to touch on too was the rule of thirds. That's another one of your compositional guidelines. Um, man, someone is having a day. Rule of thirds is one of your compositional guidelines where, you know, you divide your frame into thirds. A third this way, here, and then thirds up and down. Generally speaking, if you're taking like a landscape, your horizon line will be on one of those lines depending on what's more interesting in your picture it's kind of jarring if the horizon line goes straight through the middle of the frame um, on the other hand two um, where your lines intersect is where you want your point of interest to be uh, in your picture and you can see rule of thirds very easy on all your phones you know you can pull it up and you know it'll be on your picture on your phone as you're taking the picture so you can kind of line it up as I'm walking up the hill you know I'm thinking of whether I should actually make a video of today because you know I'm just dripping and soaked with sweat and not really pretty to look at at all but you know the reason I started this channel was one because I wanted to and two because you well know, everything I learned about photography I learned from watching YouTube videos and I still 
do that now. I follow and watch people that are better than me. And so I just wanted to share my knowledge with people that were, you know, like me a couple years ago that were just getting started and wanting to learn about various things. So I probably will post a video, even if I'm not the prettiest. It's a big hill. How come every video I end up at Morgantown? I'm walking up a giant hill in the end. So, but yeah, I'll go ahead and make the video. And you'll be listening to this right now, me rambling on. So, I'll just get to the pictures right now. I'll see you guys.